Hi Year 3, I hope you're all well and still enjoying the Stone Age topic. I've been so impressed and proud of the work that you've created so far all about the Stone Age and I've found out loads of interesting facts from you, so much so that I've actually found two more non-fiction books to find out more facts as well about both the Stone Age and the Bronze Age and the Iron Age, which we're going to go on and learn about next. The first book I found is this one about exploring the Stone, Bronze and Iron Age is all in one book. And also this Horrible Histories, Savage Stone Age magazine. And I love these Horrible Histories magazines because you can learn things about history, but in quite a fun and interesting way as well. So I'm going to have a little look at this one first. I want to read this comic first to find out about how the Stone Age started and why it changed to the Bronze Age. And we know that humans are the smartest animals on the planet now, well, usually, but have you ever wondered how that happened? How did human beings get to be the world's top beasts? Well, our ancestors had to get handy and wise. The race began when an ape stood up. In Africa, about four million years ago, an early ape got the idea of standing up on two legs. It was a cooler way to travel and he could walk further and further. The human story might have begun here. Bye. I guess he didn't want to hang out with us anymore. These early upright apes were short, small-brained and hairy. They spent most of their time looking for leaves and fruit to eat when they weren't dodging hungry animals with sharp teeth. I'm out of here. If we turn on to the next page, we can find out what those early upright apes were called. Here's an example. This is going to test some of my reading skills. Australopithecus afarensis. But then a new and more human-like creature evolved, the handyman. And again, if we look here over the page, we've got the handyman here. And the nerdy name or the official name was Homo habilis. He had the idea of chipping stones to make sharp edged tools. Now, he had a tool as sharp as any lion's teeth and the Stone Age had begun. So this is where it started. So this is cutting edge technology. Gosh, now that's handy. Handyman was mostly vegetarian, but he would eat meat when he could get his hands on it. I'll take that. So you can see he's not hunting at the moment. He's actually pinching the food off another animal who's saying, ouch, that's not fair, you scavenging thief. As if there weren't enough species already, an even bigger and smarter early human evolved, upright man. Let's have a look again over here and see what the official name is for the upright man. Homo erectus means the upright man. He knew how to make even better tools and may even have started hunting his own food with a newfangled invention, the spear. Now this really isn't fair, whatever next? Africa was getting pretty crowded. At one time, southern apes, handies and uprights were all living there together. But they weren't necessarily playing happy families. In fact, they may well have hunted and eaten each other. We'd love to have you for dinner. Gosh, how nice. I'm not sure they mean have them as guests for dinner. The uprights with their bigger brains and better tools survived. The southern apes and the handies died out. Then, about 1.8 million years ago, some upright humans decided to leave Africa and go into Asia and Europe. Good news for them, bad news for the animals in Europe and Asia. Now, I always wondered how, 1.8 million years ago, how these Stone Age people might have got across the sea to Britain, because we know that's when they started arriving. But I actually found out in this book, when I had a look on this first page about the prehistoric world, how actually a million years ago, whereas we see Britain here now and we have the sea between us and mainland Europe, a million years ago, there used to be this land here called Doggerland, so people could travel from Europe into Britain without having to cross the sea until about a million years ago, well, in the middle of the Stone Age, it actually became flooded over and that's when Britain became an island. At about this time, the uprights made a technological breakthrough they discovered the secret of fire. Fire was not only useful for driving away hungry beasts and keeping warm, it was great for making hot dinners. Table manners came a lot later. Slurp, chomp, slurp. They made fire just in time because then the earth went into an ice age. As the earth cooled, huge rivers of ice, glaciers moved across the planet. 
what I wouldn't give for a fur coat like that. Boop. About 800,000 years ago, our first direct ancestors showed up in Africa. They were called Homo sapiens, which means wise humans. They were pretty much identical to us, just a bit uglier. Some wise humans traveled to cold Europe, doesn't sound very wise, and gradually adapted to cope with the chilly weather. These were the toughest early humans, Neanderthals. They hunted mammoths and other dangerous animals. Attack! I bagsy the trunk. Ah! Meanwhile, the wise humans in Africa slowly evolved into wise, wise humans, Homo sapiens sapiens. These modern humans were smart and good looking, just like you, really. The modern humans spread out all over the world to Asia, where they slaughter woolly mammoths and build houses out of their bones, and to Australia, where they wipe out the giant wombats, to America, where they kill off the giant sloths. As you can see, unfortunately, these Homo sapiens moving across the world was bad news for some of the other animals. As they spread across the planet, the wise, wise humans pushed the uprights, wise humans and Neanderthals out. By about 27,000 years ago, wise, wise humans were the only ones left and a new chapter was about to begin. In the Middle East, people learned how to plant seeds and grow crops. They invented farming. This meant that they could grow food and stay in one place instead of wandering all over looking for food. I guess this is what you call putting down roots. The idea of farming spread across the world and farmers settled down in groups and built towns. Have you met the new neighbors, dear? But before they knew it, towns started fighting towns and people had invented war. Ouch, take that, oi, ow. In the Middle East, people discovered something better than stone, metal. At first they used copper, but then they discovered how to make a stronger metal called bronze. It was ideal for making all kinds of things like swords, spears and armour. The Stone Age was over and the Bronze Age and history as we know it had begun. Bronze, pa! Only copper's proper. You'll cop a load of this in a minute. Wow, so that's how the Stone Age turned into the Bronze Age as people started to use bronze to make their tools etc as well. Now, this is where the comic finishes here, so I'm going to need to have a look at this book, Stone, Bronze and Iron Ages, to find out a little bit more about the Bronze Age. Here's the information about the Stone Age. You can see here there's also information about the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. Let's read it. The Bronze Age. The Bronze Age began around 2500 BC, when people first began using the metals copper, tin and bronze. More people arrived in Britain from Europe, and they began to live in permanent settlements instead of moving around all the time. Bronze Age people developed new ways of farming and metalworking. And it shows you here how the discovery of metal meant that people could make stronger tools and weapons like these bronze, these are axe heads that they would have put on the end of axes to either hunt or use as tools. And then the Iron Age. And this new age began about 800 BC. And this is when the Bronze Age turned into the Iron Age because this is when people started using iron and other metal. Iron Age people, known as Celts, lived in tribes led by a king or queen. After the Romans invaded Britain in 43 CE, Celtic traditions and beliefs began to mix with Roman ones. The Romans could read and write, so their arrival in Britain marks the end of the Iron Age and the point where prehistory becomes history. We found out earlier in this page that when we talk about something prehistoric or prehistory, this long period, that's called prehistory because there was no written language. So historians divide prehistory into these Stone Age, Bronze Age and Iron Age. And once the Romans invaded Britain and because they could read or write, that's when prehistory becomes what we would call history. And the Celts made beautiful jewellery, including brooches, bracelets and heavy neck rings like this called torques. Well, Year 3, I hope you enjoyed learning those facts as much as I did and you're looking forward to doing a little bit of work over the next few weeks on the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. I can't wait to see what you come up with and the work that you send to us and hopefully I'll learn even more than I have in these books from some of your fantastic research. Keep up the hard work, take care and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.